I don't know that it's helpful to, to say chest register. That's the problem. You're talking about chest register, but I think this terminology is subjective and unhelpful. In Corelli's time, you had to have this metallic sound. People were looking for that. And, and now, I, I, you know, I'm not sure it's actually audiences, but like directors and stuff want this non-metallic sound. And I, I'm not a big fan. And I think the reason we're not able to change anything about it is because people insist on not having words that actually mean anything. So how, how are you able to ask for, you know, what, what, I don't know, you're calling it using the chest or whatever. That, those words don't mean anything specific that you can prove happened or didn't happen. So how are you able to ask for what you want? We need rigor. The Kaufman that we heard in the first part is going to be, is definitely not like the Corelli that we're going to have in the fourth example. But the, the words you're using, for instance, like uh, Kaufman was faking his sound. I mean, what are we expecting? Who's going to take us seriously if we're talk if we're saying that, that oh, I, I, this one sound, we like this one sound and we don't like this other sound. So we call this one sound fake. It's not really an adult way to talk about anything. I mean, you have a really good point. It's something important to ask for, but why don't we ask for it in a way that's not fake? <laughs> in a way that actually means something, right? Um, so what is this metallic sound and where does it come from is a really important thing. And then there's not only the the metal in the sound, there's also the question of how long are you making... I'm going to make myself bigger here. So there's the question of how long are you making the vocal folds in order to get the pitch that you're trying to get. They're teaching in all the universities and stuff that the only way to raise the pitch is to stretch the vocal folds. And they talk about like tilting the thyroid cartilage, and that's, okay, that's, yes, that's how you do that. Um, but the problem is that Corelli, for instance, is raising the pitch not by stretching his vocal folds, but by resisting the stretch of the vocal folds. He's keeping them short and fat, like short and fat as possible. So people go to universities to learn how to do this, and they come out sounding like, well, like I did, when I came out of the Metropolitan Opera, you know, um, Già nella notte, you know, it's, they take the metal out of the sound or they, if, if they let you use metal in the sound, then they force you to stretch out the vocal folds more because they're telling you that you have to relax and release everything and make it light. And they actually also tell you that eventually if you keep doing this, your voice is going to get stronger and bigger. But what actually happens in real life is that the more you practice light singing, the better you get at light singing. And that if you wanted to get good at heavier singing, what you have to do is start practicing heavier singing. As, like now, yesterday. As, and we have students who want to do that. They're showing up at school. They should be given this, like right away. They should be given Wagner right away along with all the other stuff but they need this in the mix and they should be trying to solve the problem of how to do this like from the beginning because there's there's no time to waste so but they leave school and they've been told for four years now to wait so the only thing they learn how to do is wait so yeah michael i i i get you you know it would be nice but the, the thing is that in the past they did some cool things, but they also did all the things that resulted in the way things are today. So obviously they made some mistakes, didn't they? If they didn't make mistakes, then why are we here? We are we inherited the past. We inherited what people in the past did. 
and we inherited shit. It's a mess, right? Because even though the past had uh, like Renata Tabaldi and the past had all these great people, when it came to passing on something to the next generation, none of these great people did their job or did that job. None of these great people passed on what they knew to the next generation as far as like actually getting anything done. They What they did is they took a little bit they shaved a little bit off of the profits from the next generation. They they think of the next generation as their retirement. Or they think of the next generation as as a side gig or they think they feel like they're entitled to getting paid by the next generation to bullshit about singing because they went to university or went to a bunch of teachers and paid a bunch of money to hear someone bullshit about teaching even though that had nothing to do with how they actually learned how to sing okay so everyone has this feeling like like the next generation owes us a living or something like that and that's how the old school treated us and unfortunately it doesn't work you know like they didn't they didn't pass on any good thoughts. They passed on some great recordings, but unfortunately their thoughts lead to the result you don't want. 